And now established on my departure, I'm just doing some administrative tasks here. I'm going to have Program Echo pre-selected. It's just a combination of Chaff and Flare, uh, several cycles. As Springfield is airborne, Pontiac is the B-52 passing waypoint 2 that we're going to see launching Calcums. And they're on station now. So Program Echo, good general purpose, just combination Chaff and Flare program. I just use that as a default. Unless I have a reason not to, I'll go ahead and turn the dispenser on and get the jammer on. And I was also thinking about my CB-105s, and I'll go to the profile. It's a little bit too late to do anything about it now because there's no way to, in the air, change the settings for a CBU of the type that we have. So I'm going to take the 1800 height of function, which is what I like for a CB-97 or a CB-105 anyway. You don't have to have a tightly a packed group for this type of dispenser. They'll still be able to pick out and hit targets. It's only really on the CB-87 where that's going to do a whole lot for you. So I like the 1800 height of function. And it's actually set by dials, physical dials on the dispenser itself, so I could change it all day here, but, oh, I don't know, in the sim, it'll it'll change the settings for you, but in the real world, it won't, so, so unless I catch this before I get off the ground, I don't touch it. Okay, no altitude and function time, 2.23 seconds. That's just a backup function. If I wanted to bypass the proximity sensor that's going to dictate the height of function, then I could just have it work off the set time, so 2.23 seconds after release. I could have it dispensed. I would just do that by changing the uh, fusing option here from nose tail to, I think it's just nose, or maybe it's just tail. Either way, that would be set through the fusing option, but I don't, I don't need to do anything to that at all. And then, yeah, profiles for the AGM-65 and everything else, I don't need to worry about. So everything is as I need it. Now, I was going to get my navigation config squared away. I'll go to manual so it doesn't auto-step. And then just a basic steer flight plan, and I'm set up on the first steer point, about to make a right-hand turn, in fact, up the Sally Corridor. Let me do that, in fact. I'm going to go ahead and step up to the steer point three, take it out of autopilot, right-hand turn. I'm going to be down no more than about 12,000 feet, and that's why I've got, it's like maybe an F-18 up above me. They're going to be transiting at about 15,000 feet, so as long as I stay in my altitude block, I don't have to worry about running into them or them running into me. And of course, I have all that stuff backed up in my TAD once I get that back looking at my present location. I'll just roll out right here, and this will put us at 12,000 feet once we come to this steer point. There's, this will just hold us in a steady climb. And I'll just engage the autopilot and path hold with the velocity vector right there. Let's see, where's that guy that I just saw above me? Well, he's back there somewhere. I can't quite pick him out. But, okay, I'm going to continue on here and get, get further along our way. So we'll be back in a bit. And just continuing along the elbow, same fly path a couple minutes later. I'm just checking on timing here. So time on target if I turn straight at the Marshall steer point is going to be 0909 and we had a push time of 0918 so I'm going to be about nine minutes early. Well, I, I don't know. Once I come up here it'll probably end up being about eight minutes early which is exactly where I want to be. I'd rather be early than late and yeah I think overall I, I could have stayed on the ramp for another 10-15 minutes and still made the timing on this as I had two and three and four, and right back there, forming up on me. Yeah, so, yeah, it was, there was plenty of time. I could have cut the corner up here and cut off a good 10 minutes that way. And, yeah, I could even increase speed, increase altitude, and get up there faster if I needed to. So I could have, uh, I could have done some more stuff on the ramp, but, yeah, it gives me something to do, you know, looking at it from the flight sim perspective. It does give me something to do when I'm in this phase of the flight, other than just watch the other flights get airborne. And just, you know, configuring systems, checking up my dismiss, doing some navigation, just clean up work for other stuff around the cockpit when I'm in route, so I don't mind it so much. I was also down here just sort of thinking about the countermeasure system, and I always, for some reason, I always turn the dispenser and the jammer on, on the ground. What I, in retrospect, should probably do is wait until I'm airborne to turn the dispenser 
and the jammer power on. It's going to lock out the dispensers and lock out the ECM function. I just whenever you have weight on wheels, but yeah, I think ideally I would want to wait until I was airborne to even put power on those systems. The last thing that you want to do, especially in close proximity to munitions and aircraft, is have a flare cook off on the ground. Those things are insanely hot. They'll just melt right through the the concrete, or God forbid, you should be on an asphalt ramp uh, with an aircraft in the flare. But it's just something I was thinking about. I'll try to remember it next time. Okay, we just had Pontiac, the B-52 flight call pushing for waypoint 2. So it should still be a little while before we get the Calcums in the air, but yeah, things are progressing. Yeah, one more little administrative thing to clean up. The pitfall to doing all these checks and to doing stuff that I don't normally do, like power up the Mavericks and then do the check before I take off, is that I almost didn't remember to turn them back off. So you only have like a certain lifespan that you can run the Seekers at before they overheat and really start to degrade so I did turn my Mavericks back off now the pitfall with that is I've got to remember to turn the confounded things back on before I push or probably right when I push I'll turn them back on and get them powered back up but I'm still progressing still about I'm gonna be like way way early this time let me go to the CDU display here and go to the I'll just go to the push steer point so time on target 0908 I've got a push time of 0918, so 10 minutes early. That's, uh, it sounds early, but that's exactly on time. That's exactly where I wanted to be was 10 minutes early. So I couldn't be more pleased with the, the way the timing worked out here. Got my flight formed up out there, all four of them. I haven't seen anything else fly over me, but on the data link, I've had this big air armada coming directly over me. I'm at 12,000, the rest of them are 15,000, so yeah, good show. Be back once I'm up here holding. Alright, so passing over Texas Lake, just had Pontiac 1 call in passing Irish, so we should have some Falcons in the air on that SA-10 momentarily. Okay, coming back about 90 seconds to the push, I have an engagement going on. It's exactly at my 6 o'clock, which is exactly the direction we're going to go. Once I come around on this turn, I'm going to head straight on out there to steer point 7. I was just reviewing the plan, so instead, of course, of going to steer point 7, I'm going to shoot for this little area right here to use some of this cover. I think, yeah, I think this will short a little bit better. So I'm going to hold right down here below the Chevy 2 cap, and that'll give me a good vantage point to look up there to steer point 8. Contact the JTAC and then go in and find these targets. That's another the Airborne 29. So the attack view, it should be interesting about now with all the air battles and everything else going on. I haven't heard Pontiac. They're right up here. This is Pontiac, the B-52. I haven't heard them launch their Calcums yet, but that should be coming up. And I was also playing around with this. I, I think it was, uh, I can't even remember when it was, but there was another video that I did where I showed a way to determine where a bullseye call like 100 for 23 is using the TAD. I did it that time by hooking the, the okay, there's Springfield 3. I did it that time by hooking the bullseye and then just measuring through the cursor. I could have just pressed this button a couple more times, just had a good bull cursor. And that's exactly what I was looking for right there. Well, I take that back. Now that doesn't really give me the information I wanted because it doesn't give me a distance, so I guess the way to do this would be to to do what I wanted to do at least would be to have it go hook cursor and now I have the distance of bearing down here so like for 089 at 30 I can tell that that's right down here that's actually Ford right there I guarantee those F-15s
Okay, so let's go ahead and take it out of autopilot. It is yeah, about 30 seconds to our push, and this will work out just fine because I am a little bit this side of steer point six, where I'm going to push exactly on time. Okay, let me start to get serious here. Let me go for a path hole. Autopilot. That's okay, steer point seven. I'll just engage the autopilot right there to put me into a descent. And go ahead and clean up my lighting. Let's go ahead and go lights off. Let's go for a master arm, gun pack, laser arm, just to get a little bit ahead. It's a little bit too far out, I guess, to do this, but I'll do it anyway so I don't have to catch up. Let's go EO power on. Get our Mavericks warming back up. And, okay, 0924 for time on target. And I don't have to worry about timing from here on out. All I have to do is just listen up to the radio calls, stay out of everybody else's way, and do my part here. So let's go ahead and go flight formation. Go trail. That's just to help out, well, among other things, just to help out with the terrain a little bit. I'm going to be using some terrain masking as I get up here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and take it out of autopilot and take it around to the left and be a little bit more aggressive in my descent. I'm looking out there trying to pick out the point where I wanted to hold. I think it's going to be right there where my cursor is, so let me engage it right there. You know, just sort of come in over this ridge and then hold up here. Okay, Splash Bandit, 4-3. Yeah, it's definitely right here where the cursor is. Just a big, yeah, it looks like these guys are maneuvering. Okay, everything else is working out. So we've got the 29 CB and BB for SA-10. I haven't seen those SA-11s pop up. That would be an SD. Okay, so let me go to my pod. Still a little bit too far out, I believe, to have anything really useful show up, but I'm expecting the vehicles to come down from the right. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit further to the right. And once I contact the JTAC, I'm expecting them to give me uh, a little bit more of a precise location to look. Okay, 192 for 12 in the bullseye, way out of my area. Okay, let me concentrate on the flying a little bit. And then I can get in there in the pod. It's still a little bit too early to worry about a lot of the stuff that I'm worrying about here. Okay, dismiss. Just to make sure that I'm set up early, let me go ahead and go for the AGM. I was trying to get the AGM 65, but I was cycling through my gun sight stuff. Okay, now let me cycle through the weapons, get the AGM 65s up, and that'll work. Okay, engage it right there. We go back to the TAD. Now I can start to put myself into this little little notch up here where I'm going to be masked but I still have a gap up there to look through. Okay, SA-10 is down. Call from Springfield. So that's going to free me up to get a little bit higher in altitude if I want to once I get up here in close. Okay, good job, Springfield. Okay, so we can see some of the dodges up here. I believe these are the dodge flights. Let me unhook the, the bullseye. The yeah, F-15s. B-52 right there. I believe they're about to make their strike. So I need to concentrate a little bit more on the flying here, don't I? Yeah, let me just go heads out of the cockpit. Until I'm set up and in a good safe area to do the stuff that I want to do. I'm trying to get ahead as much as I can, but I don't want to do that at the cost of flying into terrain. And this, yeah, there's there are the farms right there. So that'd mean that I'm right down here looking through the pass. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for right here. Okay, there's the road visual. I just need to not overfly the farms, and I believe this will be the point where I start to look, right there. Primary right here, and then secondary back up here. 
Okay, I can dip back down. Let me go down just a little bit and I'll set up and hold right here. I'll make sure I'm in the altitude hold. Autopilot mode. Okay, and this will work as Ford 4 F-15s out there on a fighter sweep or passing the farms. And now, this will set me up for when I'm... For when I unmask, at least, to be able to look out there. Okay, let me set up on steer point 8. I will also call the JTAC at this point. Let me slay the pot on over there. And, okay, let's go ahead and go VHF FM. I'm on 30. Let's go for JTAC Moonbeam. Check in for 30. The S6, SA19 in my direct 6 o'clock, as expected. I'm just going to have to be very, very patient with the JTAC because I did, I've debated turning Allied Flight Reports off so I wouldn't have like a backlog of radio traffic. So this will work, it just might take a little, about, little while for the calls to come in. But I'm good with that. I would rather have the calls from all these other guys coming in directly over the radio in addition to the messages over here. Okay, SA-15 Northern Airfield. Looks like things are progressing. We should have Dodge Flight in there getting pretty close to their targets at this point as well.